Good afternoon, all of you. Welcome to YouTube online classes conducted by Surya Pad and Kamu District Educational Offices. We are in the fifth chapter that is diversity in living organisms and classification. Already our teachers explained you about diversity and classification of organisms. You already learnt about four kingdoms of organisms. Those are Monera, Protista, Fungi and Plantae. Today we are going to learn about some phyla in the kingdom Animalia. Kingdom Animalia constitutes all multicellular animals which are heterotrophic. Uh, these animals are present in this kingdom, all are heterotrophic because they don't contain chlorophyll. Among us, the five kingdoms, Animalia is the biggest one. Members of this kingdom are multicellular eukaryotes. Uh, you already know that prokaryotes are uh, situated in uh, Monera. And kingdom Animalia has been classified into 10 different phyla based on their body design or differentiation. Uh, the different phyla of the Animalia, you can see here, Porifera, Celentorata or Nidaria, Platyhelminthes, Nematoda or Nematyhelminthes, Anileda, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermita, Hemicardata, and Cardata. Now we are going to learn about these different uh, phyla of this Animalia kingdom. Phyloporifera are the lowest multicellular animals belong to the kingdom Animalia. The word porifera means uh, the pore bearers are pore bearing species based on the embryological studies sponges are proved as animals and are classified into a separate phylum in animals the cells of foreparents are uh, loosely organized they are mostly found in marine water only a few are found in fresh water these animals contain pores so pores means holes they contain uh, holes all over their body so the name porifera Okay. Uh, this is the first phylum of kingdom Animalia. Phylum Porifera are the lowest multicellular animals uh, that are belonging to the kingdom Animalia. These are non mortal animals attached to some solid support. There are no specialized tissues in these animals, uh, very low animals uh, in plant uh, kingdom of Animalia and sponges uh, commonly called as these, these animals are called as uh, sponges and mainly found in marine habitats. Some act, uh, examples of this uh, phylum is Euplactella, Cycon, Spondylla, etc. The body design of these animals uh, involves very minimal differentiation and division into tissues. There are no specialized tissues in these animals, but, but uh, some differentiated cells are present um, performing uh, different, uh, different functions. And then diploblastic and triploblastic animals. Uh, uh, actually, diploblastic and triploblastic refers to do two different types of blastoblastases. The primary layer of cells formed during embryogenesis uh, uh, is referred to as the germ layer. In vertebrates, uh, three germ layers can be generally uh, found, uh, but in some animals that are radially symmetric, uh, we, found, we find just uh, two uh, germ layers. The, those are ectoderm and endoderm. The, these are diploblastic and uh, these are tri triploblastic you here you can find three germ layers uh, those are ectoderm and mesoderm mesoderm that, that is middle layer and endoderm and this is the digestive tract and here you can find only two germ layers uh, those are ectoderm and endoderm this is mesoglia this is nano non-living layer uh, just helps in transportation of different materials only uh, this is a mesoderm 
uh, not mesoderm. This is mesoglia, non-living layer. If there is, there are only two germ layers in gastroastase, uh, that is diploblastic, and the, if there are three germ layers in gastroastase, and those called as triploblastic animals. These are triploblastic, and this is diploblastic. Okay, before we go into discuss uh, some features of different phyla. We have to know about uh, bilateral and radial symmetry. Here you can observe different uh, symmetry. This is bilateral symmetry and uh, this is radial symmetry. Uh, symmetry means if you cut through a, a central part, you can get two identical parts. So if you cut through this axis, you can find uh, same mirror images of this, uh, this part. So this is called as bilateral symmetry. Here you can get right and left parts of the organism organisms with bilateral symmetry contain a single plane of symmetry uh, that is sagittal plane it is this is called as sagittal plane mm, if you cut through this plane you can get two parts uh, that is right part and uh, left part these are mirror images okay next uh, this one is radial symmetry mm, radial symmetry generally you can see in starfish uh, Idea. Organisms with radial symmetry show a repeating pattern, a repeating pattern or pattern around the central axis. Uh, this is central axis. You, know, you can find a repeating uh, pattern. Uh, this you can you can find uh, different arms same repeating around the central axis. Next, uh, second phylum of uh, uh, kingdom animalia, that is Celenterata. These are aquatic forms showing more body design differences when compared to uh, earlier phylum, that is uh, Polyphera. Here you can see two, two animals. Uh, this, this is Hydra and this is Jellyfish. Mm. Actually, uh, these organisms possess a gastrovascular cavity where uh, they digest food and transport those materials to every part of the body. And this is the mesoglia. Uh, these are also diploblastic. Um, they contain only two germ layers during the gastroblastase. And this is mesoglia. This uh, helps in transportation of materials to uh, outer parts of the body. These are corals and coral reefs. Some living colonies, uh, some living colonies uh, like uh, corals, uh, those are tiny, very tiny. They, they, they size is 3 to 6 mm nearly. Uh, but, they, but the colonies where we may, find, we may find several types of them which form coral islands. They are huge as an island. Okay, they form uh, huge islands. Uh, next phylum is Platyhelminthes. These organisms have more complex when compared to um, earlier ones. The body of the, the the body of these animals is bilaterally symmetrical, meaning that the left and the right halves of the body have the same design. If you cut through uh, this axis, you can get two halves. Uh, those are identical. Uh, this is a, a flat form which lives in intestine of human beings. Uh, this is tapeworm. Uh, this is uh, planaria, which is independent animal. Uh, th this is free living animal. Uh, this is parasite, which lives in intestine of the human beings. And there are three layers of uh, cells from which differentiated uh, differentiated tissues can be made. This is why such animals are called triploblastic. So these animals are triploblastic. The cellulose outside and inside body linings as well as some organs to be made. Uh, however, there is no true silo. Uh, so these animals are a silo mate. There is no true silo in these animals. Uh, these are so flat uh, from top to bottom. That is why these animals are called uh, flat worms. Next uh, phylum, Nematihelminthes. Uh, the nematode body is also bilaterally symmetrical. 
and triploblastic but this is not flat body they are round there are tissues but no real organs although a sort of bad body cavity or pseudocerium is present body cavity is present but this is not made up made from uh, mesoderm so this is not a real coelom this is pseudocoelom these are very familiar as parasitic worms causing diseases uh, uh, such as the worms causing elephantiasis or uh, filariasis uh, or the worms in the intestine round worm or thin worms and next uh, phylum anelida anelida uh, these these animals are also bilaterally symmetrical uh, bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic but in addition they have a true body cavity so these are uh, coelom the, the, these animals have true coelom and uh, to be protected in the body uh, there is the extensive organ differentiation the differentiation occurs in segmental fashion with the segment lines up one after one other from head to tail these animals are found in a variety of habitats freshwater marine and as well as land earworms and leeches are familiar examples uh, uh, this is a worm and this is le leech so they have true coelom in their body next uh, arthropoda uh, this is the largest group of animals these animals are also bilaterally symmetrical and segmented uh, and uh, there is an open circulatory system and so the blood does not flow in well defined blood vessels the blood flows in canal like structures they have no uh, blood vessels and they have jointed legs that's why this is called as arthropoda arthropod means jointed legs uh, some familiar examples are uh, uh, this cockroach uh, and centipod and uh, scorpion house flies uh, different uh, insects are examples of this arthropoda uh, and prawns uh, there are many examples uh, you know jointed legs are the basic identification um, identification character of these organisms Uh, next uh, mollusca next phylum is mollusca in these animals of this group uh, there is bilateral symmetry and the coelomic cavity is reduced there is little segmentation in addition uh, they have kidney like structures for excretion uh, there is a foot also that is used for moving around uh, examples are snails uh, and octopus is also the example for mollusca next phylum echinodermata uh, in greek uh, echinos means spines and derma means uh, skin uh, th these animals have spiny skins so uh, this phylum got the name echinodermata mm, thus th these are spiny skin organisms these are exclusively free living marine animals and they are triploblastic and have coelomic cavity these are the uh, these uh, these animals have three germ layers during gastrula stage and the these animals have zero they also have a peculiar water driven tube system that they use for moving around uh, that is called as uh, water circulatory system they use this water reservoir system to move around Uh, they have uh, they have hard calcium carbonate structures uh, that they use as a skeleton uh, the examples for this phylum is starfish and sea urchins okay let us see um, the classification of animalia if there is no tissue level organization organization and uh, just a cellular level organization uh, if there is only cellular level organization uh, that phylum is porifera next uh, if you find uh, a tissue level organization um, we have divided uh, three types of them 
uh, if there is no body, body cavity then they belong to nidaria or platyhelminthes. helminthes if there is pseudocelom uh, then that is belong to nematoda and uh, the other one is coelomate uh, um, see once again if there is if, if there is present uh, if there is present tissue level organization then if there is no body cavity those belong to nidaria or platy helminthes if they are pseudo silomate then they belong to nematoda if they are silomate then if the silome is formed from mesoderm they belong to annelida or arthropoda or mollusca if silome formed from pouches of endoderm then they belong to chordata silome formed from pouches of endoderm if there is no notochord that is belong to echinodermata if notochord is present then they belong to chordata next what we have learned animals are divided based on body design invertebrates invertebrates there are uh, uh, different phylums in invertebrates if there is no notochord then they are called as invertebrates first one first phylum is porifera and second one nidaria third one platyhelminthes uh, fourth one nematoda fifth one annelida sixth one arthropoda seventh one mollusca and eighth one is echinodermata Poriferans have porous body, so they got that name. Nidarians have gastrovascular cavity that is useful in digestion and uh, transportation of materials. Uh, platforms are triploblastic and have bilateral symmetry, but they have no silo. Round worms are also bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic. They have pseudo silo. Unless have segmented cylindrical body and have true body cavity. Arthropods have joined, jointed appendages and exoskeleton. Mollusks are bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic. Echinoderms are spiny skinned animals and have radial symmetry. Okay, thank you.